want you all to stand on your feet right now and open your Bible with me to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, raised his voice and said to them, Men of Judea, and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and heed my words. Verse 15. For these are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was spoken by the prophet of prophet Joel, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy your young men shall see visions your old men shall dream dreams and verse 18 all my and all my maiden servant men servant and all my maiden servant i will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy I'm also going to read from the book of Colossians. Colossians uh, chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24. And whatever you do, do it as to the Lord and not to men knowing that from the lord you will receive the reward of inheritance for you serve the lord christ also i'm going to read from ecclesiastes ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 whatever your hand finds to do do it with all your might for there is no work or device or knowledge or wisdom in the grave where you are going today i am going to be sharing with you consume in his zeal father we thank you this morning no man receives anything from you except is given directly by you thank you lord today for what you are ready to offer this assemble of the of the people of yours thank you today for what you have in store in your mind that no man can predict thank you for your spirit of wonders who is able to speak far exceedingly more than what we imagine and for what the eyes have not seen the ear heard is what you have to give so we are ready this morning to take from you, O oh Lord. Go as much as you can to get all this belly swollen, pregnant, full of your power to deliver the generation and to bring many to your, to your presence. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name we have declared. And let the saint of God say, Amen. I want you to unmute your mic and respond. It's very important to respond this time because this is i do not we do not preach a message that is not going to be participatory hallelujah you're going to be you got we're going to all get involved in the message hallelujah your spirit so body we need to get involved in this message hallelujah amen, amen. now there is a word that came from the mouth of peter when Peter, when people around, then when the disciple received 
the Holy Spirit and they start manifesting and they start speaking in tongue and they start exuberating what is commonly uncommon in the community and the people went on uproar questioning them and they were asking them what is going on you guys are behaving like a drunk people are you all out of your mind these people gathered they cried to god they received the power of the holy spirit and something different came upon them and one thing that we knew know for sure that came upon them was the passion of the holy spirit it came upon them that they went beyond themselves and they were speaking and onward from that particular time they went all about preaching the gospel with all commitment with all power with all might with a vision that the almighty god has laid in their heart so reason why we are talking about oh my God, sorry consumption of zeal this morning is because christ himself laid the foundation and gave us commandment to go into the world and preach the gospel and the book of joel is well clear clear as peter made a reference to it here it shall come to pass the lord himself will release his spirit upon all flesh now he made mention of the young people so the young people will see vision and the old men will dream dreams so god has a reason why he said the young men will see vision god depends so much on the strength that is activated by the passion of the holy spirit in the life of all the believers this commitment is necessary to drive the gospel all around the world. I put it to you today that God is expecting young people like us to arise and take the banner of the gospel without any reservation, sharing the gospel of fire to the whole world. But unfortunately today, many youth are wandering away. They do not know the reason, the purpose of their calling. Christianity has become one of such things that must happen to a community to entertain the community, to make the community feel good. And if the message of, of the gospel is no longer making people feel good, they think it's an erroneous message. They think it's an erroneous gathering. The gospel of the, the, the gospel of christ again is no longer doing what it's supposed to do i want us to clearly define what zeal means i want us to clearly define what zeal means right it is a great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a cause or an objective another word for zeal is called passion so passion which in turn means intense driving deep interest or conquering feeling a conquering feeling or conviction a strong liking or desire for a devotion to a cause that is what zeal means now let's break it up let's break it up why then must we be consumed with the zeal of the lord number one we see that in the attribute of god god himself is zealous hallelujah god himself is zealous and that's actually evidenced also in the book of hebrew chapter 12 verse 29 for our God is a consuming fire. So actually what we are carrying as believers is a fire gospel. It's not a gospel of reservation. It's not a gospel of uh, 
of human ideas. It's not a gospel of second thoughts or second guesses. It's a gospel that is distant, direct. It's a gospel of fire. Because God himself is a consuming fire. In the book of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 to 7. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth, even forevermore. Now, listen to what he said last, last sentence The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. There is no way God ever does anything without his zeal accompanying it. So, the same way he expects all of his children to get committed to the cause of the vision of the gospel with all commitment, with all zeal. God does not want anyone who is called young people, right, in our generation to sit down and never get committed to this cause. God expects our delivery of message, our delivery of the gospel, our administration of God's things to come deep down from the bottom of our heart. And you shall serve your Lord your God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your soul. This has always been the attitude of God. God never does anything. It's like a thin line. It cannot be a thin line. A thin line between an exuberance and a zeal. A zeal is very ferocious, yet can be very calm. But an exuberance is very empty. Ferocious, but it's not still. It has no peace in it. I'm not talking about the exuberance of youth with emptiness. I'm talking about the passion of the Holy Spirit that manifests through the career of fire. The career of the Holy Spirit. Today we see many young people they are not fully committed to even praying. To talking to God. To addressing God. People are encaged in fear of having to express themselves. In the community, people are kind of afraid that if they mention the name of Jesus, what will be their hand? What will be their portion? Would they not be seen as controversial person? Would they not be seen as somebody who is an hard person in the community? Would their job not be taken away from them? Would they be able to be, uh, would they be, would they be secured in the community? And so we we'll let the cause of the gospel to be played around by people who don't have understanding of God. The, the cause of the gospel has become an entertainment whereby we need to invite people from every walks of life, bring them into the church to educate the young people. To teach them what ordinarily the Holy Spirit himself can teach. The scripture says, you shall need no man to teach you for the anointing that God put in you. We teach you all things. What ordinarily the Holy Spirit can teach has, has now become the topic, the main topic of the gospel. Three keys to passing exam. Three keys to get a good job. Four keys to do this and that. Four keys to do this and that. It has become the gospel. The gospel has been watered down by certain fleshly conferences organized 
by uninformed leaders about the fire of the gospel is so unfortunate that we no longer realize that a God who calls us into this faith is a God of fire. He himself is a consuming fire. He's a God of zeal. There's nothing that God does without a zeal. Even when he wanted to start creation of the whole world, we were told that six days he was working so hard. Six days. He was working so hard. And the seventh day he rested. He gave clear example of commitment. Doing things with all heart, soul, and the spirit. That's God for, him, for you as an example. We've forgotten the foundation from which we started. I've had the testimonies of people who are our fathers in faith and those testimonies moved me and challenged me. The testimony of this man. And no wonder God is using them so mightily. Beyond us, we that call ourselves young, smart, strong people. Because they take their faith in Christ, their commitment to God with all seriousness. When you say somebody is born again, he is born again. You cannot be born again today and tomorrow again, you're back. And therefore, another altar call. Three, four, five, six, seven altar calls within, within one month, within two months, or within three months. When you say somebody is born again, he is born of the Spirit. It's born of the spirit. The, their lifestyle, as to what we had about their testimony, was that the, the day they got born again, it was a different story. They had a relationship, a commitment to God that never stopped it today. They know what it is to respect elders. They know what it is to honor people who are older than them in faith they know how to be submissive they know how to be loyal they know the principles of god in terms of relationship with god and man they understand what it is the work of salvation they was now with this what commitment is they understand what coming to god's presence means no wonder god won't stop using this mighty man and I kept wondering, when this mighty man leave the surface of the earth, what will be the portion of these young people? An example of them, Billy Graham is gone, Rena Bonke is gone, and several of them. But yet, we are, we are yet to find people who can stand in the gap, at least duplicate the exact same thing, if not multiply. It is so sad, our generation, it become a rigor. To be able to bring people in to pray it become a rigor to keep people to pray for seven hours for three hours for one hour it has become very difficult to gather people without having to provide all food and all stuff before they can be encouraged to come it has become so so sad that when we don't bring so what we call things that are good but not really define if you don't bring those things into meetings the people will not be engaged and pastors have been going around seeking for what can be used to engage kids but in the bible the only thing we saw that engaged the people and found them into passion was the holy spirit there was no other thing else that was that was used there was no other thing else that got this the youth that got everyone the disciples engaged it was the Holy Spirit. Even when Peter wouldn't want to be interested, the anointing of the Holy Ghost in him after the day of Pentecost is true without fear. Peter was almost running away from Christ. The loud man, the lousy man. When Christ talked, he could, he could respond back. At the time when it matters, they want to deny Christ. But when the Holy Ghost came upon him, he did not need any other thing to help him out. It was the Holy Ghost that kept Peter, even in the midst of danger, when he was preaching the gospel. He never denied Christ. That is the passion that we're talking about. 
before in the world they know for sure when the holy ghost manifests in you the holy ghost doesn't set you backward it sets you forward when somebody is baptized of the holy spirit we know for sure is completely a new creature hallelujah there's no jumping in and jumping out you stand firm your heart is full even when you make mistake along the line that is this passion that never goes away from you it keeps you moving stumbling block will become an advantage for you to move forward that is the passion that god is asking for us today god is an example of the one who had the zeal the passion to do things number two the evidences of passion and why must we be consumed with the zeal or passion for god number two jesus christ himself not only god was zealous when it was on the surface of the earth we saw that and if you look at the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 59, verse 17, when the prophet Isaiah prophesied about him, it was clear. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the horn the garment of vengeance for clothing. And, listen carefully, was clad with zeal as a clock wow the beauty of god does not manifest when there is no zeal hallelujah the part of the beauty decoration of god is it is his zeal that's what terrifies demon that's what terrifies evil hallelujah Amen. christ himself was zealous this clock of zeal on him was demonstrated in john chapter 4 verse 34 jesus said unto them my meat is to do the will of him that has sent me and to finish his work so a man full of zeal will be a man like christ who sees the commitment to things of god as a food hallelujah you know what happened to me today i've been happening since yesterday i'm not at rest i'm not at rest i was just thinking about the message hallelujah I don't want to use myself as an example, but sometimes you just need to say this. One any time I'm to minister, I keep meditating, thinking about it. Lord, what is next? Hallelujah. We're talking about zeal, passion to be consumed. You know, some people they don't get, they're not so moved in the delivery of God's things. They only do God's things in the last minute. And say so they are rushing around. That's not the zeal we're talking about. The zeal that consumes you in your lecture theater. The zeal of God that consumes you in, in the cafeteria. The zeal of God that consumes you as you walk the street. The zeal of God that consumes you as you're in the car. Anytime, any day you can open your mouth and talk to God about an incident, about a situation. You can address lies right inside there in your car. Right there where you're walking in the street. You can decide to stop your TV and say a prayer. I'm talking about a zeal that is not exchanged with the affairs of this world. A zeal. The hearts that allow God to take preeminence in things. The hearts that is incapable of denying God. The heart like Esther. If I die, I die. I must have to see the king. Zeal of God. God desire. From the youth of this generation what are we doing go there online it's all about all stuff blogging people don't have what to do anymore it's all blogging our irrelevances there's not much more that we'll be expecting from the angle of the gospel we're not seeing as many as we ought to see young people taking them taking their bible opening their mouth creating a social media deliberately delivering the gospel not as many of them as are compared to those who are just ministering and, and delivering all that does not profit christ if i i, can, I cannot look at it if christ had been here at this time 
in this age of social media what will he have done that's the question will he have been hiding himself in the, in the corner of his room will he have been contemplating i don't want my face to be seen that's the question there we are told that christ went about doing good he went about he went about going doing good healing all manner of disease and in all manner of sickness and disease he said we too online too we can decide to go around hallelujah everyone say go around i can't hear you say go around, go around. i'm not hearing you say go around. go around can you unmute their voice go hallelujah go around go around, yeah. go around. Yeah. very important very important very important what christ what will he have done at this very situation what will he have done at this very situation what will he have done at this very situation he will have just taken an excuse and say okay let me stay at home because this coronavirus is too much let me just stay there and then keep myself indoor but i see christ taking on the social media as a young man giving out the message of the gospel to the whole world i see jesus christ connecting with men all over the places i see jesus christ organizing a conference whereby questions have been asked from him sit down there and people are throwing questions and he's responding you know some of us today when we have little little change in our pocket i would think we are comfortable with a place to stay what to eat what to drink and clothes to wear then we think that's the end of the whole world our passion is eroded you remember what the lord told the the church in the book of revelation hallelujah revelation chapter 3 verse 14 to 19. these things says the amen and the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of god i know your works but you are neither cold nor hot i could wish you were cold or hot so then because you are lukewarm neither cold nor hot i will vomit you out of my mouth because you say it now listen carefully i am rich i become wealthy and i need nothing and i do not know that and you do not know that you are wretched miserable poor blind naked can you imagine that christ is seeing a rich man to be poor that's what i talked about last sunday that prosperity is not about counting money it's much more than that hallelujah no. but christ is they saw themselves as rich church with many people in the church the pastors are enjoying excited because they can just sit back in the parlor and give the message of god as if he's giving the message of a messenger when we give the message of god we go to stand and speak loud hallelujah Amen. we stand we, see you can't present the message of your father as if your father is worthless the message of the gospel need to be presented with you god told jeremiah he said if you go to them and you are bowing your face down and you're very ashamed of talking about me you are not convinced them before the people you don't have a zeal and passion to deliver my word he said i am going to contribute to your shame i'm going to confound you before the people oh i've seen in the attitude of god in this book of revelation how can jesus say all this and that is very challenging sometimes for us some of us do not want to read the book of revelation but they think that it's too stringent it's too strict they go into details of the present condition and situation we are in today we prefer to hear what we want to hear but the book of revelation said it all about the expectation of god about commitment to zeal number 18 and verse 18 i counsel you to buy from me gold and refine in the fire look at it 
go to what refining the fire you cannot be comfortable with what we have right now what should be paramount in your heart should be delivering the gospel written to everyone listen to every soul that should be paramount in your heart commitment to god god cannot be placed secondary in our life he can't there was no attitude of god there was no attitude in the past that shows that god wants his place in our life to be placed secondary so i see for a worshiper who must worship me in spirit and in truth to that spirit completely so every other thing we are doing in this world is in part time the full-time commitment is commitment to god and reaching forward to other people about christ that's the total commitment that god has paid of us we are assigned responsibilities and we'll just play around with the responsibility and do whatever we like with it and just think well since i'm not being paid for this let me just do what i need to do if he, if he likes he can take it if he likes, doesn't take it that is his own problem but if he if he yell on me or say something i'm just going to say i'm done that's the kind of youth we have today the youth who don't care that god is their ultimate reward that's what we have today the youth that see pastors that see evangelists that see preachers that see leaders has their ultimate reward but we know in the scripture that christ is our ultimate our excellent reward and that's why we need to increase our commitment and that's why god is passionate about who can stand for him he's passionate about that he's passionate about that he's passionate about that and christ is weeping in heaven say the young one i'm preparing i have made a prophecy through my through my prophet that this young people will be the career of the later day gospel but see what they are doing Immor immorality everywhere on the internet they are committed to vain things that are not important but god is crying he said buy from me gold fire refined fire that you may be rich a white garment that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed and anoint your eyes with high salves and you may see and as many as i love i rebook i chase them therefore be zealous and repent hallelujah see what i said mm. be zealous there's no any there's no repentance that is genuine without zeal any repentance being made without a zeal combined to it any conversion <laughs> without a being combined it is not yet real hallelujah anyone who is born again must remain in christ must be passionate about christ must be committed to god must love god things must must share his life less than the cherishing of the life christ gave to him hallelujah his personal self is secondary while christ in him is a primary number three Number three, just before I go there, Christ was also zealous. Remember, in the book of John, chapter 2, verse 14 to 17. And he found in the temple those who were sold, who sold oxen and sheep and doves, and the money chargers and business. Verse 15. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And pour out the chargers, chargers of money, and overturn the tables. Verse 16. And he said to those who sold those, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Verse 17. Then the disciple remembered that it was written, The sea for your house has eaten me up. Hallelujah jesus is not just one spiritual man who does not have his strength body and soul participating in the assignment he was given we cannot just go in with what the unbeliever says that oh when you just put your heart if you don't offend anybody that's saying you are a christian how oh, when your heart is committed to god it's going to transcend it's going to move it's going to influence your brain influence all part of your body you all every part of you will be involved that's the evidence of heart commitment heart commitment doesn't leave your hand alone 
when your heart is committed to God, it doesn't leave your face alone. When our heart is committed to God, it doesn't leave our leg alone. When our heart is committed to God, it doesn't leave our brain alone. When our heart is committed, passionate for God's things, every other thing are involved. Are involved. See what Jesus did. Went to the temple. Say, hey, my friend. He saw what was going on in the temple. He did not take waste any time. He drove them away. What do you do today to the gospel? When men who are walking down the gospel goes around the places. You sit down there and be thinking, okay, I don't want to get involved. Get involved and preach the true gospel. Let the fire of the gospel manifest through you. Open up on the internet. Create a social media. Let the labor, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Start ministering. Start ministering. It's your time. It's your what? It's your time. It's your time. Hallelujah. Number three. Amen. Why must we be consumed with the zeal of God? Because the Holy Spirit Himself is zealous. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at the book of Matthew, chapter 3, verse 12. John the Baptist witnessed to that. He said, Whose fan is in his hand? He will strongly purge his floor and gather his wheat into his garner. But he will burn up the shaft with unquenchable fire. So, Holy Ghost is a fiery burner. Hallelujah. Yeah. It burns ungodliness. Hallelujah. I'm about yeah. telling you that the anointing, the fire of the Holy Ghost, can't destroy garbage in your heart. I told you lies. The Holy Ghost, when our life is submitted to Him, is capable of furnishing us. It is God that works in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. That's the power work of the Holy Ghost there. The zeal of the Holy Ghost makes you to be totally engaged with sanctity. It has the fiery passion to get you out of ungodliness. It will not leave you until you get make sure it got you to where it wants you to get to. That's what it does. Very passionate. Very passionate. Have you ever had the Holy Ghost in you, in us? Have we ever had the Holy Ghost in us sometimes cry and weep? Have mm. we ever heard him speaking aggressively and telling us, Stop. I'm with you. Yeah. You can change now. You can do things right. It's not too late. That's his passion. Hallelujah. That is his passion. Number four. Number four. Why? Why did this message? Why must be consumed with the passion? I must be consumed with the zeal of God. Now listen carefully, number four. All committed servicemen we know were reckoned by God in the New and the Old Testament were all consumed by God's zeal. Examples are people like Phineas, kings like David, prophets like Elijah, disciples like Peter and Apostle Paul. I'm going to start from a, an example of a person, ordinary person in the camp of God, of God, of God's people. Numbers chapter twenty-five, verse eleven. Number twenty-five, verse eleven to thirteen. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar, the son of Heron, the priest, has turned back by my rots from the children of Israel. How how did that happen? How did this gentleman turn away the wrath of God away from the camp? Because he took it upon himself to reveal unrighteousness, to go against the truth, to fight against ungodliness. Some of us today are, toler are tolerant to sin. We want to be tolerant to sin sinful nature. We've got to be quiet. So quietness sometimes it can mean tolerating un unrighteousness. Hallelujah. But this man went Amen. ahead and slaughtered the one who was in the camp was against the Lord and see what the Lord told him therefore hallelujah therefore say behold I give to him my covenant of peace can you imagine that because of his zeal verse 13 and it shall be to him and to his descendant after him a covenant of everlasting priesthood because he was zealous 
for his God. I made an atonement for the children of Israel. So I will see sometimes can make God hold his hands. You know, this coronavirus that's running around the whole place, we can, God can decide to hold it if God sees our passion in this online system. All the youth are connected 24-7. All over the place, wherever they are, they keep praying and praying. God can turn things around. Hallelujah. But you know, today we just sit back and do nothing. God is thinking, what am I going to do? They are not even, they, they are not even sensitive to what I'm trying to say. You're not even seeing that this thing that is happening is a pointer to the soon coming event. It's a knock at our door. The whole world is suspended. Can you imagine that? God gave the whole world holiday, a compulsory holiday. See how it will be when Christ comes. You think it's not going to happen to the whole world? Christ is not going to come like this. He will come. Every people in the world will just know. They will all see him. If everyone could see coronavirus that come from one animal in a certain place in China and move it all over the whole world, how come Christ can't be seen by the whole world when he comes, comes back? Yeah. God's presence can silence everything. God is warning us that he is the controller of the whole world. They can decide to suspend the activity of the world at any time. But we are not listening. Instead, I want to jump out there and begin to minister to people. And passionately to preach the gospel. We stay over there content and complacent. They are not in you. It's not complacent. They are not in us. Not no part with complacency. We're going to rise and take the cause of which we are called. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Another example yeah. is David. David said in the book of uh, Psalm 69 verse 9, For the zeal for your house consumes me, and the insult of those who insult, insult you fall on me. Can you imagine? He's taking the responsibility of <laughs> somebody trying to turn the gospel and mash it on the floor. He's taking the responsibility on him and say, Look, this can't happen. There's some men of God are just going over the internet and begin to attack one another. Speak all manner of words that's supposed to be said against other men of God. This is not a zeal for God. A zeal for God is pure. You don't insult people. You don't disrespect others. Whatever you have in your heart to pass across, pass it across. Don't dilute God's message. If God gives you a, a clear message, go ahead and deliver it without hardening to it. That should be sufficient. Because a little word is enough for the wise. The wise is able to pick up what God wants him to pick up because they are not blind son, they are not deaf son, children. They'll be able to hear what God is telling you to tell them. It's not to insult them. It's not to, it's not to water down what they've been doing over years. Be on the name of the fact that you want things to turn around. This is not what God has told us to do. God asked us to go out and praise Christ alone. Not ourselves, not our ideas. Not to preach the gospel, to, to make people feel that we are okay, we are better than them. Not to preach the gospel, to look like, see if we are advocating ourselves. The yeah. gospel must be capable. The gospel of passion must be capable of advocating Christ, only Christ alone. And when yeah. gospel advocates Christ, guess what happens? Miracle flows. Hallelujah. Miracle flows. That's yeah. so why I pray today, anyone on this line, you are encapsulated with oppression. I ask the word of God today to deliver you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. As you hear this word, that hate in your head will die in the name of Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. David also said in the book of Psalm 122, I was glad when it was said to me, let us go to the house of God. Hallelujah. Elijah too. Amen. It's an of a prophet in the Old Testament. What did he say? First King chapter 19 verse 10 to 11. And he replied, I have been zealous for the Lord God Almighty. Can you imagine a prophet of fire? When fire comes on you, zeal comes along. The only, the only litmus test from which we know people are filled of the Holy Ghost is zeal. Amen. If I can't see zeal in you, I do not believe you, are, you, you have the Holy Spirit in you. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm not talking about temperament. Temperament is different from zeal. Get, get that clear. Even in your temperament, you will see the fiery furnace burning inside your temperament. Hallelujah. Mm. It is what it is. Hallelujah. It's something that one cannot explain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Elijah replied, I have been zealous for the Lord Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophet to death with his word. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me. The Lord said, go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of God. For the Lord is about to pass by. Hallelujah. When a man that is a man is zealous is having challenges because of his zeal. Who, is, who does he run to? He run to God. Hallelujah. That's what happened here. God was the only source of his strength. Amen. He never, it was never quiet. He reported the matter to God. Amen. And God said, Go just stand by stand here. I'm going to pass. Something's going to happen. Hallelujah. Amen. A man of zeal has the only one source of strength. That is God. And the disciple also is Paul. Apostle Paul. In the book of Acts chapter 20, verse 22 to 24. Acts 20, 22 to 24. And see, now I go bound in the spirit of Jerusalem, knowing the things that will happen to me there. Verse 23, except that the Holy Spirit testify in every city. Desperate talk. Saying that chains and tribulation are with me. 24. But none of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. That's it. Rise up on your feet. He did not count his life dear to himself. So a man of zeal is a man who can go extra mile with God without counting his life as more important than the life Christ has put in him. To reach forth to other people. To reach forth to his family. To reach forth to himself. We are going to pray right now. I receive the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. I receive the spirit of fire. Make that a prayer right now. I receive the spirit of fire. My passion must rise today. I receive the fresh anointing. My passion must rise. Where I have missed it, today is the day I'm recovering today. Where I've lost my total dependence on you, today is today. I am recovering today. I receive the freshness of your fire upon my bones. No longer will I be silent about my commitment to you. I need no other God. I need no other exchange for the fire you give to me. My career can exchange the fire. My career, my future, my goal can exchange the, the fire. You are the reason I'm living. You are the essence of my life. You are my fire. You are the reason I can walk, I can live, I can have my being. Lord, I pray the zeal of yours let it rise god of zeal who are told the zeal of yours we perform all your enterprise arise today and let your zeal perform every enterprise every volume of book written of me let your zeal come to my bones let your zeal come to my heart let your zeal come to my emotions let your zeal come to my leg let your zeal come to my hands let your zeal come to my eyes. Let your zeal take over everything in me. Oh Lord God Almighty. I ask everyone who is watching right now to be baptized of the Holy Spirit. May you release a Holy Spirit upon life that is watching right now. May they begin to experience the power of God. The fire that burns all unrighteousness. The fire that restores that woman who has been going through a lot of experience up and down broken bone broken heart broken family let there be restoration today let the zeal of god take over every view, viewer of this message thank you father we give you all the praise holy ghost thank you in jesus name we have declared so mighty god we thank you today for your spirit and fire 
that is the essence of zeal we glorify you we magnify you thank you for the message today thank you for the entrance of your world that proceed into the life of this world and i declare oh god by your permission today everyone under the sound of this message may you allow your spirit to come upon them may they may they receive their own fire may the anointing take over their lives thank you father we give you all the praise in jesus name we have declared